This build is sponsored by wood to works where you can get quality woods for your luthery, turning and carving needs. They ship worldwide and have a great service to help you choose through their great selection. So I've been back and forth on the bandsaw using the blade on the backstroke and you'll see as I'm finishing up this uh, uh, bit here uh, but uh, the lower side of the neck block here you can see is uh, really really tight and then on the other side we came from uh, what you can see right now to uh, like a 16 roughly 16 in gap so all I need to do now is uh, remove some material in this section just so I can uh, push it a bit further also I, I took a square to my piece of uh, scroll here the bend piece and realized that it was a, uh, just over 16 out of square on the full length so I took care of that as well and made a straight line and that helped a lot here. So it's all about taking small steps going back and forth here and making sure we have a very very tight fit here and a very tight fit here before we go any further. Uh, as for the glue up, uh, I'm not going to do the full glue up in one shot. So what I'll do is uh, make sure that the head block is uh, nice and tight, glue that and then I'm going to move on to uh, probably the tail block and finish with the two points. So here I just marked two areas that are really tight so here and here and I'm going to use the blade like I mentioned uh, to file that down. Uh, the settings on my blade are the same the, the bandsaw hasn't moved it's still uh, uh, 90 degrees to the, the plane so whenever I, I remove material it's even and it fits the jig the same way. I just need a little bit more in about that same area. It doesn't look as tight on the other side here so I'll just finish this section here just so I can move my my block a bit more. Okay so you can see now like we're tight all the way to the bottom here. It's nice and tight. There's only a little uh, discrepancy here but I'll use a little wedge for the glue up time. I also added a second clamp that you can see right now which helps a lot and you can see around the rim there it's still really tight uh, it comes off around here but that's not an issue uh, for the glue up of the block at the top okay so before I get even started there's a chance uh, when uh, I do my glue up that where this section meets uh, the side the, there's some uh, glue squeeze out that might happen here there's also some that might happen here so that would be on the edge there the points are a place I want to be careful with as well so what I'll do because glue doesn't uh, stick to packing tape I'm going to put some packing tape in this section here in the point section and at the back where the tail block is
Okay, next I want uh, as tight as a fit as possible between those two pieces before they get uh, onto the jig. Um, so I'm gonna tape those together as well. So I have a good dry fit, so what I'm going to do now is uh, outline where the glue is going to stop, here and here. Then I can highlight the back as well with my uh, block here right away, so it's done. So one of the main reasons why I don't glue everything together is that I want to make sure that uh, I don't have any gap at the top. So basically that my block when I, I clamp it, that isn't, doesn't tilt one way or the other. So I'm going to clamp it here and then I can move the jig on its side and uh, see on the other side. And if need be, I can clamp from the other side as well to, to make sure that everything is where it's supposed to be. So without any further ado, we're going to do the glue up. So as you can see here, the underside, uh, there's no gap either, except from here and here. Uh, the, the side and the block are flush. So there's gonna be minimal adjustment, if any. So now all I need to do is, uh, I'm not too worried about this one because the dovetail is gonna be here. It's gonna, this, this little piece is gonna disappear anyway. So I wanna focus on this one here. So put a little wedge in there. And we could have put another one on the other side. Now it's also a good time to deal with the squeeze outs. So because of the second clamp holding the scroll section, I can't put my side uh, call, uh, which means that I can't pull it enough to put the, the bottom piece yet. So I'll wait for this section to dry and then I'll remove this clamp, put my side here and then I'll be able to work on the back here and the points. So meanwhile, we're going to be working on the kerf. So those are two pieces of mahogany I just milled from the wood I, I, I bought. So if you're unfamiliar with that, you go back to the first video on uh, the mando cello. Uh, but this mahogany is three quarter by three quarter and it's square. And now what we're going to do, we're going to cut it on an angle, on a 45 angle, right in the middle. So this is a jig that I made to hold uh, the material uh, on, on this angle so wh whenever I cut with the blade I end up with two triangles so that's what I'm going to be doing here You can already tell the difference in size. So this one is now a lot smaller than this one. 
therefore there's going to be a lot less weight to it per piece and and if i weight all of them together it's a substantial amount of weight uh, that would be added to the instrument so every little bit i can cut up and remove to increase the lightness uh, of the instrument, uh, I will do that throughout the build as long as it doesn't interfere with uh, the actual uh, structure of it. So here I'm down to about half an inch compared to three quarters. So I removed uh, quite a chunk out of it. So I ended up moving my jig here in the, uh, on my bench, uh, reason being I ended up with clamps everywhere and I was not able to leave it flat. So as you can see those two clamps here are holding both sides of that corner block because uh, like the, the pressure was hard to apply and I, I needed to have uh, equal pressure on both sides because when I was putting pressure on one side it's almost like the other side was going on an angle. Uh, not much but just enough to, uh, for me not to like that. Uh, I put shims as well to, to push the inner rib close to the uh, outside rim. Uh, I've got a clamp here for the call, another one here. The two are the, on the tail block and the head, uh, the neck block still has one clamp because I want to keep pressure on it for at least 12 hours. So with all of that, uh, to be able to fasten this side and like the, the whole bottom side basically I ended up having to put uh, the uh, neck block clamp through my bench vise and I added a shim so this can wiggle but it, it won't fall over overnight. Now I still have this block here uh, to put on as you can see here but I'm not, I'm not going to do that one right away I'm going to wait for uh, tomorrow when everything else is dry and then I can leave it to one side and apply pressure from both clamps on that block uh, to uh, prevent any gaps at all. So, so far I'm really happy. Uh, everything looks really good. There is the joint here at the bottom where it's a bit off center, but since I'm gonna have a um, butt strip anyway, uh, that's gonna disappear. So I'm not too worried about that. And everything else look so far to be really straight. 
my kerf lining is ready to be glued in as well so as soon as the last block is installed I'll be able to do that so I'll see you guys again tomorrow So I put the kerf on the second side as well and then something I had to do was to uh, make sure that my coals would be, I would be able to remove them after the glue up. So the one on the bottom side uh, was working really well. I was actually able to remove it but the one on the top side, uh, the bottom end here was touching the tail block and also the radius around the scroll was too far so I actually had to trim that off and I'll show you that in a minute but I did that with a dry fit and realized that uh, if not looked after right away I wouldn't be able to take the call back out so always important to make dry fits and I also uh, made sure I didn't think I, would, I was actually going to get stuck there because after I did the glue up, the coal is the full width of the inside. <clears throat> I uh, removed this, cleaned that up from the glue, cleaned the inside from the glue and reapplied it and even still, you just saw it was kind of tacked in place, Stick, it was sticking to the side of it so I'm glad I, I took the time to do that. You also seen me uh, remove all the bottom pieces, the little strips. The reason for that is uh, the rim was centered in the jig and that's where I wanted it and that's why I put those little strips. But in order for the uh, clock pins to have enough room to clip on the side, I need to have as much of the side uh, coming out of the jig. So by doing that, I was able to push my jig all the way to the bottom flip it over and push it again so the rim would protrude on this side again and that way you have the full access to your to your uh, side to do the clamping. So this is what I removed from the tip of the jig so I tried the smaller section first and that was still not enough and then I went and removed this whole section and that proved to be enough and I was still applying 
enough pressure in that corner. Uh, doing uh, the sides, I, I found that I was using mostly clamps anyway, I, and this was basically just holding it in place. And with the block in place and this side, I think uh, when I build my next one, this should be enough. Uh, on the back side, all I did, uh, this came to a, a corner, and what I did is just cut it onto a kind of a 45, just to allow the, the call to come out, because uh, it was hitting the the tail block is right here and it was hitting this way. Okay, the next step will be to add uh, a piece of wood here uh, to prevent the side from changing shape. So it doesn't need to be very thick. Uh, I've heard those called either struts or cleats, although cleats are usually used on the soundboards. Uh, I, I heard that terminology for the side as well. So what I want to do is because there's a long stretch without any support, like support, I mean like the, the neck block or the the tail block or even the two blocks here will prevent the side from uh, changing its shape over time so by adding a little structural side piece here and here that should prevent any uh, movement from that section and also will put one uh, in the belly here at the bottom in between the two points but the distance between the, the lower point and the tail block is very small so I don't feel like I need to put one there and uh, here in that section where the, the neck block and the scroll is, I don't feel like there's any issues there either. So what I'll do is like one, two, and three uh, struts, and uh, then the rim should be completed. So I just thickness this little piece of mahogany to uh, 100,000. So basically the same thickness as the sides. And now I'm gonna clean the edges with a little block plane, and they'll be ready to be glued in place. This gives you a good idea on the actual size of the instrument. It's going to be a pretty big instrument. Uh, we're sitting at two and a half pounds right now, roughly. Um, you have to remember that, like most of the weight right now, is in the head block, uh, the, the neck block, and the tail block. Uh, that being hard maple uh, would increase the weight quite a bit. The two points are made out of spruce. Uh, I wanted to lower the amount of weight. Uh, so that's why I use that. Uh, I also have a weight uh, on the kerf uh, lining, which I, I got to about 200 grams, so it's, it's not very much. I didn't weigh the, the block. I wish I, I would have, but I, I didn't think about that. Uh, and the sides themselves are pretty light. I, I was handling them, so there, there was not a lot of weight to them. So most of the weight, like I mentioned, are, it is in the neck block. You have to remember also that I will be cutting out a lot of that weight when I make the dovetail for the neck. So it's not something that we can weigh right now. But uh, most of the Mando cellos uh, range from 5.5 pounds to 7.5 pounds. Uh, I already knew this one would be a bit heavier uh, just because I increased the depth of the instrument. Uh, most Mando cellos are uh, width uh, or depth is uh, uh, three, what was it, uh, three and a quarter to three and a half, and that's with uh, the top and back already glued on it. Now this one is at three and three quarter already, and I still have the top and back to put on, so that's gonna bring me closer to four and a quarter. Uh, all that extra uh, material to, to join both sides in the neck block increased the weight Quite a bit and I have the, the same at the back here uh, that increases the weight so it's a good thing to know where we stand as for weight but it's not something I'm going to be worrying about uh, for now uh, 
I, I'm expecting this mando cello to be in the six and a half pounds. I would like it to be there. If it goes to seven, I'll still be happy because I'm thinking about probably installing a Verzi tone, tone producer in it. So that's going to increase the weight a bit as well. So this brings us as to why I decided to change the uh, size of the instrument. So we already talked about the width here. Uh, I also increase the, the widest point of the instrument. The K4s were between 14 and a quarter to 14 and a half. Now this one is at 15 and a half. Uh, I also wanted it to be a bit longer, but for material uh, to for material reason, like the my wood supplier said, at 22 inches they have ample material, but when it goes over 22 inches, it gets a bit trickier to find stuff, and the prices are increasing. So I decided to redo my drawings to accommodate for that. So the reason for why I decided to get the the whole section here bigger, and it. In my view, it has to do with the, the body, the volume of air inside the body. Uh, if you look at a cello, a cello, it's easy to find a cello that has a side of four and a half, at least four and a half. Um, a cello would already dwarf this instrument because cellos are pretty big. Uh, I always felt like the cello, the mandel cellos were lacking uh, the air volume inside of the instrument. Uh, which I think would help uh, with the lower end of the instrument. Uh, so that's why I'm building mine. It's quite a bit bigger than what you would see online if you if you look at the K4s. Uh, they're, they're fairly narrow and smaller body, but I think that's going to help this instrument uh, sound quite nicely. At this point, I would like to take a moment to thank my uh, sponsor again, uh, Bow River Wood to Works, for helping out with this build by providing wood and uh, uh, their expertise was uh, greatly appreciated. So here's their uh, website address, do check them out. It will be in the description down below as well. Don't forget to leave a comment if you have any questions. And as you already know, I put uh, in between video, uh, in between build videos, I put uh, Q and A's now. So if you have any questions as to why do something or dimension or uh, those kind of stuff, I'll be answering those in the uh, uh, vlog slash Q&A videos. Um, check me on my Instagram and on my Facebook page. And uh, until next time, I wish you well.